In this video, we're going to implement role-based authentication using NextAuth in Next.js 13. We're going to create this application where we have this admin path that only logged in users that actually have the role set to admin on their account can access. So if you go back to the homepage and try to log in using this Google login that we created, we're logged into our account, as you can see. And now if I try to access my protected pages on the server and or on the client, I can access them. But if I go ahead and access the admin path, it says you're not authorized because if I open up my MongoDB where I'm holding my user information, as you can see, if I refresh this page, this user currently has the role set to user. So therefore they cannot access this admin path. Now let's see how we would go about implementing this using next auth. Now we're going to build on top of the project we built on uh, the previous videos on this channel where we implemented next auth uh, in our Next.js 13 application inside the app router. I'm going to include a link in the cart so you can watch that video to understand how we got here in the first place. The first video is implementing next auth in a Next.js 13 application. The second video that you're going to also find it in the card uh, takes us a bit further, a bit advanced. We're going to implement authentication using a middleware and we also provided this account path where they would update their information or their profile using server actions. We're going to build on top of where we left off where we have this Next.js application as you can see on the left hand side. Uh, the last thing that we did was using a middleware. The, this middleware is what comes from the next auth package. It was running on our profile page to protect that page and also on this, on any path that starts with the protected path. And just as a refresher, if you haven't seen that video inside the app, we had this profile page. This is the user dashboard or these protected pages where we had this client side page that we were using the use session hook to hook into the session and also the server render page, which uh, we use a get server session function uh, from the next auth to actually get the session. But because we were running the middleware from down here, uh, this is going to uh, tell Next.js uh, with this config matchers that we want to run this middleware on our profile page and also the protect, uh, also any path that it starts, with, starts with the protected page um, to be for the user to be authenticated if they're not authenticated the default behavior out of this middleware is that they would be redirected back uh, to the signing page where they can just sign in now all i have done now is that i have also added this admin path to this matcher so our auth middleware is also running or protecting our admin page so if the user is not logged in we want to make sure that they cannot access that page now going to the documentation for the role-based access control, it's actually not on the next auth.js where you would find next.js specific documentation. It's on the auth.js.dev. This is the new documentation. As you may know, next auth is expanding to be auth.js where you can also use it in other libraries like Svelte or other frameworks. It's not Next.js specific. So some of the documentation is still in the old site and some are in the new. The role-based access control is in the new one. I'm going to include the link in the description so you can find it out. Now here is uh, talking about actually implementing or passing in a role uh, to our user when we are creating our users uh, by creating this profile callback. So the first thing that we would want to do is going to our next config. So if I go to app and API auth and next auth route, this is where we are initializing how we want to use the next auth package. We exported this auth options as a separate object. So we can just pass it to get server side sessions on the server side to access the session. Now on the signing page, as you can see here, I have this e continue with email or the magic link provided like on the form, but it's not actually implemented here. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to continue with the Google login, but it will be the same concept there too. Now, the first thing is that to actually set a role for our users when we are creating them. So you can also pass in this profile callback function to your providers. 
so they can actually set a role. Now, whatever you return from this profile function or callback is going to be used to create your users in your database. So if I go back to the database where we actually see the user, you can see the user has an ID, name, email, image, role, mapping to the object that we are returning from here. And the profile is what comes back from the Google OAuth in this instance. Uh, it has more properties than what we're extracting here. This is what we needed. And the results of whatever you're returning from this profile, as I mentioned, is used to actually create the user inside of the database. Now, as you can see down here, also to persist this role on the token, on the JSON web token, and also on the session object on the client side, we are using these two callbacks. So JWT callback and the session callback, uh, generally speaking, callbacks index auth are asynchronous functions that would run at specific moments in your authentication flow. So for example, whenever a user creates an account or signs in, this JWT callback is called to create or return a token. And right after this callback, the session callback is called where you can access anything that you set on the token to also add it to the session. And whatever you return from this session callback is going to be the session object that you can access on the client side. For example, inside of this protected page on the client side where we are using this use session to actually access the session, this session object is going to be mapping to whatever you're returning from here. <coughs> Excuse me. So as you can see here, when the user signs in, uh, if there's a role on it, just as we are setting it here, we are actually persisting that role also on the token. And right after this callback, we are going to have the session callback where we are reading that role and also persisting it on the session. So if I now go back to my admin page, this is a page that I have added on top of what we, you can find on the previous video, whereby I'm using this get server session function to just check the session if the user has not the role of admin i'm going to say you're not authorized to view this page uh, otherwise i'm just going to go ahead and show them the admin page so now if i go to the admin page as i am logged in but my user as you remember is just having a role of user now if i go ahead and actually update this to have an admin role so even with us updating the database we can't still access this admin page. You have to force the user to sign in again if you're updating the role. Now, however, you're going to implement this inside your application, whether talking directly to your database or having this as an admin feature where you can just change the role of the users. You have to force them to sign in again. So if I sign out here while I'm at on the admin page, it's going to redirect me back to the sign-in page because our middleware is still protecting this page to be only accessible when the user is authenticated. But if we now go ahead and log into our account, as you can see this time around, I actually can see the content of the admin page and I'm authorized. Now the downside of the way that I just showed is that you have to force the user to sign in again for the updates to take effect. An alternative, if you're using a session database or a session strategy where you're holding a session table or a session collection for the logged in users, it's first of all easier to log them out of the session so they would be forced or required to sign in again. And also inside your session callback, you can have this logic of actually reading the session again when you change the role. So the implementation may uh, be different from application to application, uh, but we now know that first of, first of all, when we are creating an account inside NextAuth, we can pass in a role with the profile callback function or even if we are not doing it at that time, we can still read it from our database, pass it to our token and pass it to our session. So we can decide whether or not to show a page to a user uh, depending on their role. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is actually to implement this using the middleware. Now, the other way that you can use the next auth middleware other than exporting the default function that comes out of the next auth is to actually get this with auth middleware and specify some options. These are going to be the same options that you pass into your next auth 
when you're initializing it. Specifically, you can use this authorized callback whereby you get, you get access to the request object and also the token. And if this authorized callback function returns true, the user is going to be authorized. If it returns false, the user won't be authorized to access whatever path that they're trying to access and they will be redirected to the admin page. So if you're still matching the admin profile and protected page uh, to instruct Next.js that we want this middleware to run on these paths, uh, but to differentiate between the two paths that I have, I'm checking actually the next URL object on the request to see what's the path name. And if the path name is admin, meaning that if the user is trying to access the admin page, I'm going to check to see if they have a role of admin and I'm going to return true if this is equal to admin, which is going to authorize them to access that page. And if they're not trying to access the admin path, they're going to probably be accessing one of these two paths because that's the only time this middleware is going to run. In that case, I just want to know if they're logged in or not. If there is a token inside of your authorized callback, it means they're logged in. And if there is no token, they're not logged in. So I'm turning this into a Boolean, saying if there's a token, return true, authorize the user to access the page, whatever page they're trying to access. If there is no token, they're not logged in. You can also pass in a uh, middleware function to this function where you can do extra stuff if the user is actually authorized. So this middleware is going to only be executed if this authorization callback returns true. So you can do extra stuff over here. Now, one downside of implementing this role base flow with this middleware that I found is that if you have a user that's logged in, but it's not an admin, it's just a regular user, but they would still try to access your admin page, this middleware is going to run and it's going to check and see they're trying to access the admin page and it's going to return false because they're not an admin. So returning false from this authorized function by default is going to redirect them back to the sign-in page. But the user was already signed in, so they're going to, back to go back to the sign-in page. Now, one way to get around this is to also on the signing page have this logic that looks and see if the user is already logged in and they're redirected back to the signing page and the callback URL set on the URL is actually going back to the admin page. So have this logic to actually say, hey, you're not authorized. Uh, you're logged in, but you're not authorized to access the admin page. Uh, that's the only downside that I found. I didn't find any other way to uh, kind of solve this because by default, this with auth function returns a middleware, and this is going to look at the authorized callback. If you return false from this, is going to just automatically redirect them back to the signing page. If you could come up with a different solution to bypass this problem that I may not have seen, let me know down in the comments. But other than that, that's a wrap for this video. We covered role-based authentication using Next Auth in Next.js 13. If you have any questions, Hit me up in the comments like always and until next one. Bye-bye.